Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to get you through this. Uh, it's a little lengthy, but uh, I'm try to paraphrase some things. Hallelujah. Is that all right? We're going to try to paraphrase some things to uh, at least get you to the understanding. Amen. Praise God. We're coming out of the book of Habakkuk. Like the book of Habakkuk. Some people say Habakkuk. It's not like uh, but Habakkuk. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm coming out. There's only three books, chapters in Habakkuk. Amen. Praise God. So I think I, I think I can get through this. Amen. Praise God. Y'all gonna pray for me? Yeah. Amen. I pray that you receive something from this word. I pray that God touches me, amen, when the words of these lips are clay, that I might be able to render unto you what he has rendered unto me. Thank you, God, amen. Praise God. So we're coming out of Habakkuk, the first chapter, and this is one of the minor prophets in the book of Habakkuk. Oh, hallelujah. Habakkuk now here, he is uh, one of the minor prophets, a good man of God, hallelujah, that cares about his people cares about people and, and is concerned about how they are living, concerned about who they are and what's going on in, the, in that nation of uh, Judah. He's concerned about them. So here we find Habakkuk. He, he is uh, having a conversation with God. He is trying to speak and tell God what his complaints are. Hallelujah. Because the first couple of verses talks about him speaking to God. Hallelujah. And the first verse, it says here, it says in the second verse, it says the burden with Habakkuk, the prophet, is sent. It says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? When cry, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Man, it is, that is a tough place to be. Yeah. That is a bad place to be. Crying out to God and he's not hearing you. Uh, crying out to God and things are not changing. Yeah. Hallelujah. He will not hear what you are saying. Hallelujah. But it says, thou does not show me iniquity. Why does thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me? Mm -hmm. And there are that rise up strife and contention. Oh, hallelujah. This, as I was reading this, reminds me so much of what we're going through today. Oh, hallelujah. As he is trying to have this conversation, this complaint, he has taken to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. So here in the scripture, we find this prophet of Becca. He is complaining about the things that are happening in Judea. In Judah. So Rebecca begins to address God with the struggles of Israel. He's talking about the injustice and the violence and the, the idolatry that's going on and the threat with Babylon and, and the corrupt leadership. If I know that, you might see that that's going on around here somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So he's trying to have this conversation with God and Lord, why? Do you cause me to see these things? Why are you causing me to behold these things? Why are these things going on? What is going on? Can you hear my cry? Can't you see what I'm going through? Hallelujah. Sometimes the answer that we want from God is not the way we want it. The answer we get is not what we are expecting from God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I remember when I was a young boy. I was young. I was before my teenage years. I was young. And Brother Darius, I got into an altercation. See, when I was that young, we didn't use altercation back then. We didn't use that word. Something else. But I got into an altercation when I was a young boy with the guy up the street, the young boy up the street. 
And I came home, I ran home to Pop, walked in the door, I ran, ran inside, told her, Pop, got some stuff going on up the street. I need your help. We got to figure this out. So mother was in the room when I was explaining all this to Pop about my altercation about the boy up the street. Mother says, well, invite him over. I'm like, what? What? And just invite him over. Invite him over? Wait a minute. I'm expecting dad, I'm expecting dad to hop up with this rambunctious attitude and run out there and say, look here, man, put some respect on my son. <laughs> I was expecting him to get up from where he was. I know he just got home to work. But I wanted him to get up and run to that guy and say, look here, put some respect on my son. That didn't happen. They said, invite him over. So one day, we were outside. I was expecting these things to kind of keep up the keep up, you know, the ruckus that was happening. I said, hey man, who's you coming over to the house? Came on over to the house. We sat down on the porch. And then mother asked him, did he want to eat? And I still thought they were gonna come out and say something. Never said anything. I was expecting Rambo. Rambo didn't show up. Daddy got the Lord's Supper. <laughs> came over, came over, sat down. Mother asked me if he wanted to eat some food. He came in the house, ate some food. I'm like, wait a minute, just the other day, we were just fat. Now, I'm trying to resolve an issue the way I think it should be resolved. And now he's sitting at the dinner table. <laughs> oh, Lord. So sometimes the way we expect God to fix and resolve things may completely be different than what you expect. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So here, Habakkuk now, uh, he's saying here, uh, the answer, God is letting him know that here, this is what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to fix the problem. Here's how we're going to fix the problem uh, with your, uh, yeah, you got some bad leaders. Yeah, you got some things going on. But here's how we're going to fix it. Yes, Babylon is, 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 is torturing you. Babylon is uh, threatening you. Yes, I know that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, got, I understand it all. But here's how we're going to fix the problem. We're going to allow Babylon, <laughs> we're going to allow Babylon to have charge over Judah. Is that something different? You know, wait, you know, Rebecca's like, hey, wait, hold on, hold on now. Babylon, they, they're the, they, they are our oppressors. These are our oppressors. You're going to take our oppressors, put them over. Mm. You're going to put them over Judah. I'm already saying, wait a minute, Judah is already bad. Why are they going to take somebody that's worse and put them over Judah? What is going on? What? Somebody would have a problem with that. I would have a problem with that. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But there are so many different things going on. So now here, Rebecca now is coming on to his second complaint. He's about to complain again about how God wants to fix the problem. Isn't that something we still, we just, man, man. Has anybody here got anything to complain about? <laughs> I don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. You ain't got to raise your hand. You don't have to raise your hand. Because we can complain about something every day of the week. There's always something to, to complain about. And we always have a way of how we expect it to be done. <laughs> like my father would say, woo -hoo. Oh, bless the Lord. So here, Habakkuk said, wait a minute now. Art thou not from everlasting? 
Oh, Lord, my God, Holy One, that we shall not die. Uh, so the Lord said, you, you're ordaining the, the judgment. Uh, thou hast ordained them for judgment. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. You are ordaining them to judge over us. I think y'all have a problem with that, wouldn't y'all? The person that you fight, the Lord going to put them over you. <laughs> That's a problem already. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. But here, hallelujah. But here, the next thing it says, the Lord, he just doesn't really give them a good answer of how he's going to fix it. But then he says, look, tell them this. Listen to this. He says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables, uh, hallelujah, that he may run that readeth it. Hallelujah. Then it says, in the third verse, it says, uh, in the Beckett, we're in the second, y'all all right? I know I ain't giving y'all too much uh, between scriptures here, but then it says, uh, uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Hallelujah. Told him to write the vision, but the vision is yet for an appointed time. Um, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Hallelujah. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Hallelujah. What is this vision? Some people, some people get this mixed up. I'm trying to help you a little bit. Some people feel that they need to go out and write a vision. Some people go out and write a vision and make it plain. It's not up to you to go write your vision. It is not, that's not the time to go write your purpose. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's not what it's talking about. The vision is already written. It's already been seen. He's telling Habakkuk, just go ahead and write it down on some tablets. What is that vision? The vision is that I want to destroy Babylon. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all all right? Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The vision is already been written. He said, put it on some tablets so that people can see it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm trying to find my spot. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He says he's going to uh, destroy Babylon and those people that are likeness in the likeness of Babylon. We're going to go ahead and destroy them too. Anybody that's doing it wrong, we're going to destroy them too. Hallelujah. Bad leadership, we're going to destroy them. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. People that's doing it wrong, we're going to destroy them. Hallelujah. But then, let's go here. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Y'all all right? Amen. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Mm. He says, he says, write these on the tablet. He says, I will destroy Babylon. Mm. Uh, and if you are living in the likeness of Babylon, you will be destroyed as well. But then here, take this one. He said, I will preserve and protect my people. Mm. I will preserve and protect my people. And it says, the just shall live by faith. Oh, hallelujah. So even in the midst of these things that are going on right now today, hallelujah, God wants you to trust in him. Hallelujah. Don't get weary, hallelujah, in your well-doing. Don't get weary when you are trying to do well, hallelujah. But now understand that because of the vision that's being written on the wall, hallelujah, because he's been doing all these complaining. All these complaining, all these things that be going on. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name. We got some things we can complain about. We got a pan we got a pandemic. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What can we complain about? What can we, what can we complain about? What can we complain about? Oh, hallelujah. The country is trying not to, to catch this virus. Hallelujah. The country waiting on vaccines. Uh, because of this, what we're in right now, uh, stress, stress and depression sets in. Mm -hmm. What do we got anything to complain about? Yeah. Yeah. Restaurants are closing. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody complaining? Schools are closing. We ain't got nothing to complain about. Gas prices going too high. We got anything to complain about? Loss of work. Home evictions. Home, home evasion. Crime is on the rise. Anybody got anything to complain about? Oh, we got something to complain about. Oh, hallelujah. But because the vision is being written already, that God is going to take care of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of the time we're going through today, God is going to take care of you. Uh, that's what the vision is all about. Hallelujah. I'm going to protect my people. Hallelujah. Even in injustice, God is still going to protect you. Do you believe the Lord is going to protect you? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then it goes on and says, oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and trust in the Lord. Because while you are trusting in the Lord, everything can't come your way. When you are trusting in the Lord, oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. When you take your whole mind and just trust in God. Hallelujah. I read something the other day. It was talking about uh, faith. Uh, having faith is stepping out onto a stair that's not there. <laughs> Who would do that? But trust in There's no stair there. You know it ain't there. But we just go ahead on a step. And Sister Sherry said, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Don't you, do that. Don't you, don't you dare step down there. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Joe, where it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yeah, all right. We have to trust the Lord no matter what is going on in this present time. We have to trust in the Lord even when things are just going haywire. We still have to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everything is not going to go your way. Right. Everything is not going to be rosy and, and all this stuff. It, uh -huh. But you have to trust in the Lord. Yeah. So many things is failing in our economy today, but we still yet have to trust in the Lord. Cars can't even be made because they're missing chips. We still have to trust in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Food shelves are being, oh, Lord Jesus. You go to, to go to the grocery store, you can't even find what you want to eat. But you still got to trust in the Lord. Why? Because of, because of the day that we are living in. But you must still trust in God. Hallelujah. Lean not to your own understanding, but trust in God. And I can't even say that enough, but just give them, just trust them. Hallelujah. Because there's going to be some things that are going to come your way that's going to try to sway you. Hallelujah. But trust in God. Mm. Then it goes on, it says here in the, uh, the third chapter, it talks about, although the fig tree shall not blossom. Some things aren't going to blossom. That you expect to blossom. Still got to trust him. <laughs> Still got to trust him. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, my, my God. And neither shall fruit be on the vine. There may not be no fruit on the vine. Things that may have gotten that rough where fruit just don't even grow. Still got to trust the Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God. Still got to trust the Lord. My mind. It says, the labor of the olive shall fail. Mm. You can't even make no meal because you ain't got no oil. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. But you still have to trust in God. Anybody willing to just trust in God? With everything else around you seem to be failing, you still got to yet trust in God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And the field shall yield no meat. Even if the field don't yield any meat, I'm still going to trust them. Meat now is about, I don't know, too, too much to buy ribs. Can't even buy ribs. Went to Sam's Club to buy some ribs one day. Cost me $50 to buy some ribs. Used to cost you like 25. But you still got to trust in the Lord. Sometimes you got to dig a little bit deeper. Deeper than you want to dig. But you still got to trust in the Lord. Sometimes you got to give more than you 
want to give. Sometimes you got to do more than you want to do. Sometimes you got to say more than you want to say. But you still got to trust in God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Woo. Still got to trust in God. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Mm. Oh. See, these are things that we don't normally see, but we depend on. Oh, hallelujah. We don't, we don't normally see the pig, but we depend on some bacon. Uh -huh. I ain't talking to nobody. Hallelujah. We don't, we, don't, we don't really see the cows in the stall, but we sure want to go get a burger every now and then. Oh, am I talking to anybody? Hallelujah. So it might feel like a drought somewhere, but we still, got, we still want some lettuce, amen. We still want a salad somewhere, amen, praise God. But you still must trust in God. My, my God. And though all of these things are not happening. He said in the 18th verse, he says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord and I will, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Even when some things are missing, still got to rejoice in the Lord. Anybody got to rejoice anyhow? Anybody have a rejoice in them that call you? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and trust you. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy it. I'm going to go ahead and keep looking up. Because all these things out here don't have to bother me. Because I've seen the vision. Travel high to 
I was so amazed. I was so amazed, Danny. I had to look it up again. I said, I must see this. But the day, I said, I got to see this. So I got on YouTube. Because they got the technology. We have all these different technologies. You can get on technology. You can find out what hind feet are. You can find out what the deer does. You can find out what the deer does with the hind feet. You can find out what the deer is, is, is what he's talking about with these different terrains. Okay, so now I got on YouTube, Brother Jeremiah. I looked it up. I saw on YouTube a deer climbing a wall. Climbing a wall. The wall was almost at a 90 degree angle. And the deer is climbing the wall because his hind feet, they can claw and catch on to different things. Oh, they can catch. And the, and, the, and the thing about it is the predators that try to, to get to the deer. They can't, they can't get them. Why? Because they, they don't climb so high. <laughs> Y'all not see <laughs> Because they climb so high, they can elude and get out of situations. Hallelujah. Because they don't. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> because the deer, they don't have, they don't have that uh, 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 that anger thing going on with that most animals have. They can just attack a deer. Oh hallelujah. But this, this deer was climbing a wall like this. And you look at the wall right now, you look like, ain't no way. Yeah. The deer is gonna climb a wall like that. Uh -huh. Man, y'all need to look it up on YouTube. <laughs> hey, look it up. If the Lord thinks of you that way, yeah. to preserve and protect you, while everybody's doing all kinds of crazy things in this vision, he says, look, I'm going to protect you. And how am I gonna protect you? I'm gonna make your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Learning. Amen. 
may not be in school, they might be doing home school, but they still learn. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, there's going to be some opposition. Bless the Lord. I'm so happy today. I'm just, I'm just excited today. I'm excited today. I hope you got something out of that. I hope you received something out of that today. Hallelujah. So much injustice for those that are righteous in God. God's going to protect you. He's going to keep you even when things are going wrong. I'm going to move on to this part. It's, um, I kind of skipped a couple things. The other day, is that the Martin Luther King the other day? Uh, yesterday? Uh, it's coming up. And to commemorate Martin Luther King, 